Some folks don't mind working with somebody looking over their shoulder, or even on it. Call it animal magnetism. That certainly does apply to the artist that Rita Braver has been to visit. The second you spot Hunt Slonum painting with Perky on his shoulder, you know you're in for something a bit unusual. After all, how many artists would turn their studio into a bird sanctuary? I started as a child when I, we lived in Hawaii, and I was just desperate to have birds as pets. In fact, I had to sleep out on the porch with my parakeets. Now he has parakeets, doves, and all kinds of other feathered friends, most orphans that needed homes. And no surprise, birds are a favorite painting topic for Slonum, along with rabbits, lots and lots of rabbits, and butterflies and moths, another obsession. He's constantly buying antique displays. These are the morphos from South America. These are day moths from Madagascar. These are Indonesian. What I notice, though, is with whether it's your butterflies or your birds or anything else you paint, you're not trying for an exact replication. No, you're not fine. all about painting birds. Well, I'm not a medical illustrator either. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think the camera, you know, took the need for that away. I'm such a fan of, an, of expressionism. It's not just his art that's expressive but also his whole sense of style. This is the red and the orange and the blue everywhere. This is... <laughs> well, I had to kind of invent, make color save this space. I think this is my favorite spot in the whole really? loft, the blue. It's like being room. up in the sky, it isn't is. it? And it has no light, no windows. Slonum loves rooms saturated with color. And he likes to showcase his work along with objects he has collected over the years. But I had been buying all this pink furniture at the flea market, and friends of mine were going, If you buy that, I'm never spending <laughs> I just said, I don't care, I think it's great. And so all this furniture kind of came before the room. Slonum says that some of his painting subjects, especially his portraits of saints and other famous figures, including Abraham Lincoln, come to him in an extraordinary way. So I've heard it said often that you channel these people who you paint. Well, and I form I do when I'm painting them. I feel their presence. Um, but more specifically, I work with channelers who actually hear words and voices. In fact, he says a medium recently passed along a very important message. Lincoln told me recently to paint doves, and that's been a very Lincoln told Abraham you to... Lincoln. When you were whatever, <laughs> I'm painting doves. Slonum's works do have an otherworld quality to them. He's painted a series of large canvases composed of haunting monkey faces. He actually used to own a couple of monkeys, and you can see his fascination with them in sculptures too. Lots more birds here as well. I like this repetition idea, obviously, and I think that it becomes more interesting when you work with the same form over and over again. In fact, I f only feel comfortable. I have to paint something like, you know, 50 times before it's really part of me. Slonum recently moved out of this sprawling Manhattan loft because the building's been sold for condos. But never fear, the old place has been immortalized in a new book, Pleasure Palaces, the art and homes of Hunt Slonum, with dazzling photos, not only of the studio, but also of Slonum's three historic homes. Court's Mansion in upstate New York, built in 1873. Albania Plantation in St. Mary Parish, Louisiana, where part of the film all the King's Men was filmed. And Slonum has another Louisiana plantation house too, Lakeside 
in Point Coupe Parish. Why do you need two? I always answer that by saying, why do I need one? <laughs> <laughs> it's just a collecting <laughs> frenzy. I can't put my finger on it. One reason may be that the Slonim family moved around a lot. His dad was a naval officer, and Hunt, now 56, likes putting down roots. He was drawn to Louisiana because he went to Tulane University in New Orleans. And when you come down here after being in New York, do you just... <laughs> <laughs> just love it. I just love to sit on the porch and rock and look out. Lakeside was built in 1832. A friend told Slonim it was for sale. And you kind of were smitten immediately? Immediately. We just the first visit, I said, got to do something about this. What he's done is extensive renovation, furnishing the place with more of his finds. You've got Japanese prints on this wall. You've got pieces collected from Friends, everywhere. Yeah. And your own pieces thrown in amongst them. Why not? You is think it... they should be isolated? I like the way they mix with other work. I mean, here's an early, probably an 18th century bird painting. But this is the gilded room. It's definitely gilded. And another of those amazing mirrors. This one was a really funny one. This is all fruits. But I've never seen one with a whole cantaloupe <laughs> at the top of there. Have you? Slonim's art and artifacts were the subject of a recent exhibit at the Ogden Museum of Southern Art in New Orleans. So I guess the wow factor is very much in play wow here. Wow factor is very high and we hope very hunt. <laughs> very hunt, exactly. Director Rick Gruber says the museum even painted its walls in colors chosen by Slonim. What was the effect you were trying to get here? A breadth of the kind of work he does? A breadth of his work, a range of his interests from the birds, the tropical, the landscape, the architectural environmental, but also Hunt is a very spiritual artist. We hope the space would have some of that charge as well. And Gruber says that though Slonim can sometimes come across as eccentric, he is a fine artist whose works, which sell for up to $100,000, are in the collections of more than 80 museums, including this one. We found him to be very serious. Great fun to be around, but very serious as an artist. And as for Slonim himself, he loves showing off his art and his homes. He's known as a bon vivant. Throwing parties is one of his passions. But there's nothing Hunt Slonim cares about more than painting. I just feel like I have this connection to oil paint that I can't let go of. And I don't feel very satisfied by anything else. You know, when you really hit it, it's just, it's just this bell goes off and feel like life is worthwhile and you've done what you were supposed to do. Hunt Slonim, doing what he's supposed to do.